In this video, I will talk about voltage multiplier circuit, voltage doubler circuit and the detailed analysis of half wave and full wave voltage doubler circuit. At first, what is a voltage multiplier circuit? Voltage multiplier circuits are the electrical circuit that converts low voltage AC electrical power to higher rectified DC voltage using a network of capacitors and diodes. From the main supply line, we will use a step down transformer to convert that high voltage AC into a low voltage AC electrical power and we will pass that low voltage AC electrical power through a network of capacitors and diode and you may know that a diode acts as a rectifier that means if I apply an alternating signal at the input side of the diode it will convert this bidirectional voltage into a unidirectional voltage if I pass it through a rectifier or a diode and the, if the maximum value of the input voltage let's say equal to Vm the voltage multiplier circuit will convert this maximum value it could be 2 times 3 times or 4 times if the rectified DC voltage or the output voltage is 2 times of the maximum value of the input voltage that circuit will be known as voltage doubler circuit and if the output voltage is 3 times of the maximum value of the input voltage it will be known as voltage tripler circuit and if the maximum value of the output voltage is 4 times of the input voltage it will be known as voltage quadrupolar circuit the idea of a voltage doubler circuit is like this if i have a sinusoidal voltage here with maximum value of vm if i pass this sinusoidal voltage through a voltage doubler circuit in the output i will get an unidirectional voltage whose value will be two times of the maximum value of the input voltage see here the input voltage has a peak value of vm but in the rectified output voltage i have a voltage value of 2vm that means the voltage gets doubled in the output side that's why this will be known as voltage doubler circuit now let me talk about the half wave voltage doubler circuit a half wave voltage doubler circuit will use a step down transformer and two capacitors c1 and c2 and two diodes d1 and d2 like this at the input side of the step down transformer i will apply a high electrical power and the step down transformer will convert that high voltage AC power to a low voltage AC pow electrical power and the electrical power will have total two half cycles positive and negative half cycle now I will proceed with the operation of this circuit during the positive half cycle during the positive half cycle our alternating quantity will have a maximum value of Vm during the positive half cycle this terminal will be positive and this terminal will be negative so as this terminal is positive you will see that the positive terminal is connected with the P side of the diode D1 and the negative terminal is connected with the N side of the diode D1 that means during the positive half cycle the diode D1 is in forward bias so when a diode is in forward bias if that diode is an ideal diode I can replace that diode with a short circuit or if I consider the approximate model I can replace that diode with a voltage source of 0.7 volt and you will see that the positive terminal is connected with the N side of the diode and this negative terminal is connected with the P side of the diode D2 this diode D2 will be in reverse bias as this diode D2 is in reverse bias I can replace this diode with an open circuit so when this diode is replaced by an open circuit there will be no current flow in this branch as there is no current flow therefore our capacitor C2 will not get charged and during the positive half cycle the capacitor this diode D1 will provide a low resistance path through this branch to charge up the capacitor C1 therefore our charging current will flow in this direction and now let me redraw a new circuit with replace this diode with a 0.7 volt voltage source and this D2 with an open circuit see here i have redrawn our circuit and i have replaced the diode d2 with an open circuit and the diode d1 with a voltage source of 0.7 volt equal to its built-in potential therefore the capacitor c1 will get charged and the diode d1 will provide a low resistance path for the flow of the 
charging current of the capacitor C1. Therefore, charging current of this capacitor C1 will flow from this direction. Therefore, this side will be positive and this side will be negative. Okay, as the capacitor C1 get charged, therefore it will store that charge as a voltage. Let's say Vc1. Now let me calculate the value of Vc1 for the positive half cycle when it has a maximum value of Vm. To do that, I have to apply. Kashop's voltage law in this loop. So at first I will encounter this input voltage and its negative terminal. Therefore its voltage will be positive. After that I will encounter this capacitor and its positive terminal. Therefore its voltage will be negative. After that I will encounter or I will see this diode D1. Therefore its voltage will be negative as I have seen the positive terminal therefore it will be minus 0 0.7 volt equal to 0 therefore our the voltage that is stored in the capacitor c1 will be equal to maximum value of the input voltage minus the diode voltage drop or the built-in potential of the diode let's say this is our equation number one and this is during the positive half cycle the capacitor c1 will store this voltage during the entire positive half cycle okay now consider the negative half cycle of the low voltage during the negative half cycle it will have a maximum value of minus vm as as i have changed the polarity of the terminal therefore i won't put the minus sign in front of this vm change of polarity indicates that the max the voltage difference between this point and this point gets overturned and it is equal to minus vm during the entire negative half cycle the capacitor will store the that voltage vc1 that is that it is gained from from positive half cycle okay and uh, previously vc1 was equal to vm minus 0 0.7 volt during the entire negative half cycle you will see this negative terminal is connected with the p side of the diode d1 and the positive terminal is connected with the n side of the diode d1 that means this diode will be in reverse bias so i can as this diode is in reverse bias i can replace this diode with an open circuit that means i can remove this diode from our original circuit like this okay and you will see that this negative terminal is connected with the n side of the diode d2 and the positive terminal is connected with the p side of the diode d2 that means this diode will be in forward bias so when this diode is in forward bias i will replace this diode with a voltage source of 0 0.7 volt as this diode is in forward bias that means the current the charging current will flow from in this direction the, as the current is entering from this direction therefore the this terminal of the capacitor will be positive and this terminal of the capacitor will be negative and the voltage difference between this terminal and this terminal will be v c2 and you will see that we are taking the output voltage across this terminal and this terminal thereby i will calculate the voltage that is stored in this capacitor and that will be our output voltage so during the negative half cycle our circuit will now look like this see i have replaced the diode d2 with 0 0.7 volt source d1 with an open circuit and capacitor c1 will store the voltage vc1 in front of it sorry for this minus sign there will be no minus sign in front of this vm and i have changed the polarity of the terminals okay now to calculate the value of vc2 or the voltage that is stored in this capacitor C2 I will apply simply Kirchhoff's voltage law in this closed loop at first I will encounter this negative half cycle and its positive terminal so our this voltage will have a negative value minus Vm after that I will encounter this C1 and its positive terminal therefore its voltage will have a negative polarity after that I will encounter this 0 0.7 volt and its negative terminal therefore its voltage will be positive after that I will encounter this Vc2 and its negative terminal therefore its voltage will also be positive and the value of Vc1 the voltage that is stored in the capacitor during the positive half cycle was equal to 0 0.7 Vm minus 0 0.7 so if I put the value of Vc1 in this uh, equation I will get B minus Vm minus Vm plus 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 plus Vc2 equal to 0 therefore our Vc2 will be equal to 2 Vm minus 
1.4 volt now what is this 1.4 volt see during the positive half cycle the voltage that is dropped across the diode d1 was equal to 0.7 and the voltage that is dropped across the diode d2 during the ne negative half cycle was equal to 0.7 and this 20.7 that is two diode voltage drop causes this 1.4 volt if i consider the diode voltage drop is very negligible if i neglect the diode voltage drop that means if i cons consider our diode d1 and d2 as an ideal diode if i consider the diode d1 and d2 as ideal diode therefore both of them will be replaced by short circuit so when the diode will be replaced by short circuit i can neglect the diode voltage drop so if i neglect the diode voltage drop our output voltage will be equal to 2 vm and that voltage will be stored across the capacitor c2 see the peak value of the low voltage was vm and the output in the output we get a voltage of 2 vm therefore it is known as voltage doubler circuit as the output voltage has a peak value which is twice of the peak value of the low voltage now i will show you the operation of full wave voltage doubler full wave voltage doubler that means this circuit will contain two diode d1 and d2 and voltage doubler that means the output voltage will be twice of the peak value or the maximum value of the applied input voltage so this is the circuit structure of full wave voltage doubler circuit here we are using a step down transformer and applying the secondary voltage across this terminal and this terminal now during the positive half cycle of the applied input voltage during the positive half cycle of the applied input voltage the secondary terminal will also go through the positive voltage with its maximum value of vm this terminal will be positive and this terminal will be negative now see the positive terminal is connected with the p side of the diode d1 and the negative terminal is connected with the n side of the diode d1 therefore this diode d1 will be in forward bias and the positive terminal is connected with the n side of the diode d2 and the negative terminal is connected with the p side of the diode d2 therefore this diode d2 will be in reverse bias now if i consider the diode d1 and d2 as an ideal diode therefore we can replace d1 with short circuit and d2 with an open circuit during the positive half cycle the charging current through the capacitor c1 will flow in this direction therefore this side of the capacitor will be positive and this side will be negative and you will see that the capacitor c2 is disconnected from this circuit due to the reverse bias of the diode d2 therefore this applied maximum voltage vm will be appeared across the capacitor c1 so i will get vc1 equal to vm during the positive maximum value of the input voltage now consider the negative half cycle of the applied voltage during the negative half cycle the secondary voltage of the transformer will have a negative maximum of minus v m this terminal will be at higher lower potential with respect to this terminal that means this terminal will be positive and this terminal will be negative see the negative terminal is connected with the p side of the diode d1 and the positive terminal is connected with the inside of the diode so this diode d1 will be in reverse bias as this diode is in reverse bias i can replace this diode with an open circuit during the negative half cycle of the input voltage the negative terminal is connected with the inside of the d2 and the positive terminal is connected with the p side of the d2 so this diode d2 is in forward bias as this is an ideal diode i can replace this diode with a short circuit see during the negative half cycle the diode d1 gets opened therefore the capacitor c1 does not have any path to discharge therefore during the entire negative half cycle the capacitor c1 will store the voltage vm ac across it between these two terminals now during the negative half cycle our charging current will flow in this direction see this is the positive terminal this is the 
negative terminal so our charging current will flow in this direction and and completes its flowing path by flowing in this direction okay so this side of this capacitor c2 will be positive and this side will be negative and the voltage across this c2 will be our vc2 during the negative half cycle there is no other voltage absorbing element in this circuit if i apply kashov voltage law i will see that the vc2 will be exactly equal to our vm and you will see that the voltage across the cap capacitor c1 is equal to vm vc1 equal to vm and the now the voltage across the v this capacitor c2 is also vm therefore our output voltage will be equal to vc1 plus vc2 voltage in the capacitor 1 equal to vm and the voltage across the capacitor c2 is also vm which will give us a total value of 2 vm okay so this is the voltage double circuit we are applying the input voltage with peak of vm but in the output we are getting 2 vm that's why this is called a voltage double circuit that's it thank you